Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and y'all want to get ready for pork, pork, and more pork. My kitchen is just full of it today, and these recipes are sure going to be belly pleasing. But first, I've got to head over to Stripling's General Store and pick up one of my favorite cuts of meat, an old country style backbone. And then I want to head back to the kitchen where I'm going to cook y'all up a perfect breakfast food my piggy pudding. And then I'm gonna cook those backbones up with some nice fluffy rice. And then I'm gonna be fixing the perfect savory side dish for any kind of pork, the traditional baked apple. And finally, a peanut butter grilled ham. Who would have thought that a peanut and a pig would taste so good together? So y'all get out your wet nap, cause this little piggy is going to market. One's gonna have backbone and rice, and one is gonna have grilled ham. And in order for all the little piggies to have this, this little piggy's going to the market. And I'm not talking just any market. I'm talking about the best country market in these parts. We're heading to Stripling's General Store to see my friend Skeeter. He's just a good old Southern butcher boy. So what you say, let's get in and see what he's got for me today. Skeeter! Yes, Paula. Did you recognize my voice? I did. <laughs> How you doing? Doing fine. How about you? Good, I'm Good fine. to see you again. Good to see you, honey. Do you know this is the only place in the whole world that I can find country-style backbone? Well, when we make our sausage, we cut them right off the fresh hogs. And Just you got that. some. Oh. How come y'all the only ones doing it like this? We do it the old-fashioned way, and we take the time and cut the old-fashioned cuts of meat. Old-fashioned is still the best. It's still down south. It's still the best. All right. Thanks. I need about three of those, please. And Skeeter, there's just one more thing before I leave. Do you know I've never been in this store that I didn't leave with beef jerky? Y'all have the best in the whole entire world. So I want two pounds of beef jerky. <laughs> Good, Paula. Well, we just have to have some. Boy, that's got to be the best dadgum jerky in Georgia. But now it's time for me to get on back to my kitchen and start on my piggy party. Thanks, Skeeter. I just love Skeeter. Skeeter is so good. There's no store like Stripling's. Well, actually, that's untrue. There's two places that I just love shopping for meats, and that's Stripling's in Lake Blackshear, Georgia, right outside of Albany and Cordell. And the other place is Ray's Butcher Shop on Montgomery Street in Savannah. But the big boys are not carrying a lot of the cuts of meat that I'm used to cooking. And if you can find you a little independent butcher, y'all be nice to him. You know, slip him a 50 at Christmas time. But take care of that butcher, because he can really take care of you. And I can't hardly wait to start on this backbone that I have uh, that Skeeter cut for me. But before we do that, I'm going to start on piggy pudding. We're just going to give that pan a quick spray. And this first recipe I'm going to show you is just great for a weekend breakfast or a Sunday night supper. All right, now we're just going to throw these in here. Some brown and serve link sausage. And while those are getting going, we've got some fresh apples soaking up some lemon juice so they won't brown on us. And I cut mine fairly thin. This cooks in like 25 minutes. All right, now I'm gonna go over here and drain the apples. I think our sausage are Plenty brown enough. Ain't nothing like a little pig, y'all. All right, I'm gonna take cornbread mix. And it does have sugar in it, so it's sweet. Which is gonna give us our sweet and our savory. All right, now I'm gonna take our sausage and toss them into our greased casserole dish. And then I'm gonna take the drained apples toss them in and then I'm just going to toss it all around and then we're just going to pour our cornbread mix over that 
and that's how you put piggy pudding together. Now we're going to throw this in the oven and we're going to bake it for about 20 or 25 minutes. All right, I've got that in the oven and while that's baking, I'm going to start probably one of my favorite dishes in the whole world and that's backbone and rice. All that meat around that bone is so unbelievably tender. And just in case the uh, pork doesn't have enough fat in it, I'm going to start with a stick of butter. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add some diced onions. All right, I'm just going to throw my backbone in here and fill in this pot full of backbone. All right, now I'm just going to cover it with water. And I'm going to throw in a few bay leaves. And I'm going to put a little salt and a little pepper. And then I'm going to sprinkle in just a little cayenne pepper because Michael likes hot stuff. And I'm going to probably let that cook for 45 minutes to an hour. The one thing you'll just want to make sure is that your pork is done. Don't want to eat any raw pork. All right, so we're just going to let that cook away. And I'm going to come over here in this other oven because I have a piggy pudding waiting on me. Look how good this looks. All right, I want to just smear this with a little butter before I eat it. And it's important that I get my fruit in today. So one piece of apple. <laughs> Gonna drizzle that hot, pure maple syrup. I, I'm not stingy with the syrup at all, because it kind of drinks it up, you know? Mm -mm. It's a perfect Sunday night supper, or Sunday morning breakfast. And when we come back, I'm gonna finish up the backbone and rice, and later on, we're gonna be doing a grilled peanut butter ham, along with some baked apples. Know, pig and apples just go together. You've seen the whole roasted pigs with the apple in his mouth. Well, that's not done just because it's pretty. It's done because they actually taste good together. So that's what we're fixing to do next. But before I move on to that, I want to come down here and put our rice in our backbone. So that's boiling pretty good. Just going to pour that rice in. I think I want to add some more black pepper. So that looks good. And I'm going to let it come back to a boil. I'm not going to turn it down yet. All right, so I'm going to put the lid back on it. And when I hear it starting to rattle, I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer for about 10 more minutes or until it's done. But in the meantime, I'm going to start getting our apples ready for our pig. And all I'm going to do is core this apple. I just love baked apples. And then I'm going to just cut the top off of that a little bit. And be sure when you core out your apples, you don't want to cut through the bottom because you want this apple to act as like a serving bowl. All right, now we're going to take sugar and cinnamon and a little fresh ground nutmeg. Stir that together. All right, let's see. Let's go back over here. Our rice has come to a nice ball. I just want to give it another quick stir. Now we're going to turn that down and just let it cook till it's absorbed most of that water. Actually, liquid. That's no longer water, y'all. 
That's pork stock. All right, now I'm just gonna pour our sugar mixture in the center of each apple. These are gonna be so delicious. All right, now we're gonna take a pat of butter and kind of stick him down in there. And then when we get these done, I'm gonna take some apple juice and just pour around our dish. So instead of using water, this will give it even a stronger taste of apple. Now we're just gonna take some tin foil and cover our apples, because we kinda want them to just steam in that apple juice. I'm gonna cook them for about an hour, and then I'm gonna start checking on them, because I really like my apples nice and tender. Okay, let's take a look at our rice yet. Oh my goodness, it's absorbed all the liquid. I just love green onions with my backbone and rice. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit and throw it right there on top. I like it just like this. But you'll find as your dish sits, your rice is gonna keep absorbing your stock. All you have to do is just add a little hot water to it. In comes some of that fabulous backbone. This is such a plain dish. It's so ordinary looking, but it's so powerful in flavor. And I'm just gonna add me a little parsley leaf. I see a bay leaf down in here. We'll wanna pick that out. Mm. Can't tell y'all how good this is. When we come back, I'm gonna share with y'all a fabulous peanut butter grilled center cut ham. So y'all don't go anywhere. I'm fixing to get an important piece of machinery out of my pantry for this next dish. One day I tried mixing up all this stuff by hand and it was hard. I learned quickly that you either got to have a food processor or a blender. So I'm starting on my buddy Ron's peanut butter grilled ham. And this marinade needs to soak into that ham for about three or four hours, so I'm gonna get started. I'm starting with a chicken stock and fresh garlic and grated onions. And when you use a grated onion, it gets all of that juice and flavor out of it. So this is gonna have a real strong oniony flavor. And I've got some honey, and it's gonna help sweeten up that ham. And peanut butter. All right, I've got some soy sauce. Just gonna make it salty along with that sweetness of the honey. And this is just a kitchen bouquet. This is gonna make it dark. Really doesn't have much flavor to me, but they, they say it actually adds flavor. All right, so we're just gonna blend that up. All right. Mmm. Just a bunch of interesting flavors, and that onion is real, real strong in it. Now I'm just gonna pour this over our ham. So we just wanna make sure, before we put our ham in the fridge, that it's completely covered. And then during the day, during the three or four hours that I'm gonna marinate it, I'll keep flipping it around in that pan. I'm gonna have to wash my hands. I've got sticky honey all over them. All right, so I'm gonna throw this in the fridge. Normally, this would be cooked on an outside grill over charcoal, but today I'm gonna grill it right here on this cast iron griddle and just give that a 
quick squirt because I don't want it to stick. And I'm just going to shake that off just a little bit. That looks so good. All right, so I'm going to let that just grill away for a while. I'm going to go back here to the oven and check our apples because I think they're probably ready. I can see the steam coming out. They look so good. And I want to tell you a little bit about the marinade. What I'm going to do when I grill that other piece and take it all out, I'm going to pour this up in a saucepan and I'm going to bring it to a rolling bowl so it's nice and thick. It's going to be wonderful. All right, let's come over here and check on our ham. All right, so let's take our ham up. For me and my family, I'd cut us each a serving size, about the size of a pork chop. All right, now I'm gonna put a little extra sauce on mine, and I'm gonna sprinkle it with a few peanuts. And to make me think I'm eating healthy, I'm putting some green stuff on my plate. and I can't hardly wait to dig in. I'm gonna go ahead and, while I'm tasting this one, I'm gonna put the other one on and let it be cooking. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna be tasting. Oh, it looks so good. I wanna get me a little bite of apple too. I thought it was going to be a princess bite, but look how big it turned into by the time I put everything on it. A new way to enjoy ham. It's wonderful. And I've got to leave for a minute, but when I come back, I'm going to show you all the cutest little piggy napkins that I've made to go along with this cute little piggy meal. just having more fun today with this Here Piggy Piggy show. I've even made some napkins for the family. I've made a papa pig for Michael. I've made a baby pig for Anthony and a baby pig for Michelle. And these are the little pigs that still live at home with us. And I'm actually working on my own right now. I bought just a plain linen napkin. And this is a stencil that I used. And you can go to your craft store and just find any kind of stencils that you want. Today's meal, I'm actually doing the pig stencil. This is a special paint that you can buy at the craft store, and it won't wash out of fabric, so you'll want to be careful that you don't get it on your clothes. So I'm just going to pat this paint on this pig, and I'm just going to blot that a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and just press the piggy down. Isn't that a cute little pig? And now I'm gonna write my name on my napkin. And these napkins are great if you're having company over and you wanna leave them with a little parting gift, they can take this home. And all you have to do for the piggy tail is take a pipe cleaner and just roll him around your finger to form his tail and then wrap your napkin up in it. It's the cutest little napkin. I wish I would look at this. I, I've, I've got my best friend here with me, my fork. I can't hardly wait to dig into all these scrumptious dishes and I literally don't know where to start with the grilled peanut butter ham, the piggy pudding, the backbones and rice. Just look at how good the apples turned out. You can see all the cinnamon and nutmeg and sugar and butter just pouring out of it. 
but Michael and the kids and I are definitely ready to just pig out. And speaking of pigs, this little piggy sends y'all love and best dishes to all you other little piggies out there. Till next time, y'all.